hope you guys are ready for today's craft. We are going to be doing a last minute Dollar Tree Father's Day gift. If you have not gotten um, the father in your life or the father figure in your life, anything or haven't put anything together yet and you're struggling to come up with an idea of what to do, I really hope that this is a, I feel like this is one that they've been done before. Right. Um, it's not like it's anything new. But we are also going to be teaching you all, we're going to be doing etching on glass on top of putting this little lottery ticket bouquet together. Yes. So we're going to be go diving into uh, best practices for etching on glass. Mm -hmm. I feel like we just etched on glass last week. But, but it's a, for one, it's a curved surface. Yes. So we're working with a curved it, surface. That makes it different. And you're going to have, this is what Tanner loves this about having three of us yeah. because we all have different takes on like things that we prefer and like how we apply things and how you can get a similar result by doing different techniques. So that's going to be cool for you if you watched last week to see like how you would do it. Right. Instead. So love that for us. And also you said Father's Day, but like I'm feeling you can incorporate this into like birthday gifts or graduation, which I know we've already yes. got graduations already passed, but like last minute birthday gifts mm -hmm. or something fun. I mean, there's so many different ways you can do this and you don't have to just do it with like lottery tickets. Right. There's so many different things you can do it with. Yes, love that. So This is what we are going to be making today. We are gonna be making a last minute Father's Day DIY, I guess you call it a lottery ticket bouquet, but we do have etched glass. So if we go overhead, you can see that I have taken this and this is all other than obviously like the lottery tickets and stuff, um, this all this stuff that you can, we have here you can find at Dollar General, um, except for the um, armor edge. Armor edge you can't get at Dollar General, but this beer stein we did get at Dollar General. So what I was saying is I'm gonna have to uh, take this. They only had one. That's I remember they only had one mm -hmm. when I went there. Um, of the glass ones. So we're just going to, I was going to show you guys this. We're going to take all this up and we're just going to etch on the back side of this too. Yeah, same diff. Same diff. So they can hold it this way or this way. And I can never decide yeah. when I'm making mugs and stuff. Do, I'm like, do I want to look at it or do I want everyone to see my message? So it'll be great. They can have it on both sides. They can have it on both sides. Do you hold it with your right hand or do you hold it with your left? I don't know. You know I'm ambidextrous. So it's whatever I'm feeling that day. Every time I hear ambidextrous, I think of amphibious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amphibious. I use both hands. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, you do need some type of glass. Now you don't have to use a beer sign. Um, we just, I thought I liked the area that I had to work with with this glass. So um, that's why I did get this. You are going to need... Um, some foam squares and we'll go overhead and show you guys these foam squares specifically they came from amazon i didn't buy i know that um dollar tree has like the foam tape i didn't buy any because i knew that we had some at the office that we had purchased but you can get these at dollar tree um i did get some tissue paper this came from dollar tree love getting tissue paper from dollar tree they have them in the coordinating packs or you can get them in just packs of plain colors um, you are going to need some skewers. Once again, the, you can find these at your local Dollar Tree. Um, we do have some just little pieces of floral foam here that are going to go in the bottom of your cup. Now, this is also something that didn't specifically come from Dollar Tree. This is a little bit of an extra something that I did, and I'll show you guys here. You don't have to have this extra behind your lottery tickets. I just feel like it gives it a little bit of a, mm, like it takes it mm -hmm. to the next level. It looks more put together, I think. Um, I do think that it does look a little bit more put together. This specific glitter cardstock did not come from Dollar Tree. Um, if you all have been around our channel, you know that we are obsessed with Ashley Falco's shed free glitter cardstock. But just in case you guys didn't know, and we'll go back to one. Um, Dollar Tree now has glitter cardstock. And the reason that I know they have it is because I tried to sublimate on it. And it didn't work. It did not. <laughs> has that video gone out yet? No, uh, um, no, I don't think so. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you see the results. 
because you can sell them on glitter cardstock, just not that one. I plan to cut with it for, I had a video lined up to film today and I plan to cut with it. Well, so see, we'll I didn't get, I didn't cut. even get around to cutting with it, so I don't know how it cuts. I just know that it does not sublimate. It will not. <laughs> <laughs> it will not. It was worth a good college try, though. You know, try. I gave it a really good try. <laughs> so anyway, um, the other two things that you are going to need will go back overhead. You are going to need a standard grip mat. This is just going to be for cutting your cardstock and your either stencil vinyl or. Uh, removable vinyl, whichever one you plan on using. Um, I do have some of the StarCraft Star Mask is what it's technically called. This is their like masking vinyl for painting, things like that. I just had it because it was easy for me to grab instead of having to like dig through the bin. We have a scrap vinyl bin. So instead of having to dig through the scrap vinyl bin to find a size that I knew would fit, I just grabbed this because it was quick and easy. However, you all can use just regular scrap vinyl, doesn't matter what color, um, to make a stencil. And then the star of the show is going to be the Armor Etch. This is something that can be found on Amazon. Um, you can get it at your local craft store, lots of different places that you can get Armor Etch, but this is going to be the star of the show, and we are going to show you how you can etch glass today without having to use a laser. Love yes. that. Okay? Love it. So, who is ready to get started? We'll go ahead. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them for me in the comments. I am, unfortunately, going to go ahead and take this apart. It's okay. It's okay. You guys, behind oh, the look. scenes, a little behind the scenes. I can just say, I'm just taking it all out together. Yeah, and it just molded. Listen, I love when past Lauren really helps out future Lauren. Yes. <laughs> I knew what I was doing, putting the tissue paper in the bottom and then wrapping it all together so I can yeah. just take it all out. So we're just going to set this to the side. Lauren's been dying to scratch those lottery tickets, y'all. Y'all, I have. I've literally asked Alicia, can I scratch those yet? Do I have to wait till after the live to scratch those? Like, can I scratch them yet? Yes. So, and now, so we may win the lottery on the live stream. Today. We may just scratch them on the live and see if we win the lottery today. Oh my gosh, that'd be so fun. Um, Kim asked, can you use the etching cream on plastic, like plastic water bottles? So, no, you cannot use it on, um, it says, it actually says it on the back. Armor Etch will not etch plastic or some Pyrex. So it does have to be... So Pyrex is like your fire tested, you can use it in the oven glass. Armor Etch sometimes will not etch that because it's got like a coating on it. So it does have to just be glass. You cannot etch plastic with Armor Etch. That's how you know Pyrex is good. That's when you know it's good. <laughs> the edge cream can't even etch the glass The edge Pyrex. cream can't even touch it. And I, we've had some questions before about stainless steel, like using this to etch stainless steel. You cannot use Armor Etch to etch stainless steel. Just make sure you all are reading like the back mm -hmm. of the labels. Anytime you're trying to etch anything or like use a new substance or chemical, make sure like you're getting the correct ones. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to, if you don't care, ask you to run out and grab me a one of our burnishing oh, tools yes. that actually has something to keep this steady. Yes, I feel you. Okay. So what we're going to do first, while she's going to grab that for me, I'm going to go ahead and take out my measuring tape and I'm going to measure the area that we are going to be working with to see exactly how large I can do. So really and truly, we're looking at like three and a half to three inches by like five-ish. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Also, if y'all don't have one of these, I don't, what, what are you doing? Because this Surely. right here is a game changer for me. Yeah. Those now, are it, it, with this beer sign, this handle is a little heavier um, so it may fall over to the side, but I can't remember what I did last time to prop it up, but I, you can like put some stuff under here. See if this will, oh, look at there, prop that up like that. <laughs> Would you look at it? Love the innovation. Okay. So we said we were looking at three and a half inches in width and about five inches in height. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to Cricut Design Space. And I have this here, but what I want to do is I want to grab a shape, 
pull, pull this in here and we said, I'm gonna unlock it. We're gonna do a width of about three and a half and a height of let's say five. Did I, oh, I, well let's change the width to four. I think we can work with four. There we go. And then you can either leave it there as a basic cut or you can come up here and you can turn it, oh, not that one. You can turn this into a guide so that you see where you are uh, working. Carrie's asking about Christmas bulbs and Armor Etch. Lauren, you did that last year. Yes. Um, you can use Armor Etch on the glass Christmas ornaments. Um, that would actually be really pretty if you hand paint your ornaments and like etch a little spot and then like paint around it or do the like outline of the etch mm -hmm. would be super super pretty but you can etch the christmas bulbs it is doable yes very much so the only thing that i have seen with the christmas bulbs being etched i did the if you put glitter inside of them remember i did the santa mm -hmm. baby one yeah and it's like when you put the glitter inside of it if you do like a glitter christmas um like Christmas ornament, it's like the etching kind of like disappeared. Yeah, you can't see you it. You can't yet. really see it. It has to stay clear for you to be able to see the etching. Right. Or you have to color your etching, which I don't like doing. Yeah, we don't like the color yeah. etching. It's not our favorite. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a fan favorite here yeah. at Maker's Gonna Learn. But, you know. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to our website in just a second. Um, Kim says to paint the inside. I still, it's one of those things like you have to be very careful with doing a solid. It's, it's, it's very, I don't yeah, know. Once you, you cover etch, that inside layer, it just kind of like vanishes. Like for you some reason. You can't see it good. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go to our cut files section. And since we are doing a dad themed bouquet today, I am going to show you guys what I do when it comes to choosing my files, especially from our website, if it decides it wants to go there. <laughs> oh, there it goes. There it goes. I'm going to exit out of all of this. So, what I like to do, if I don't know where I want to go or I don't know what direction I'm going in, um, I will come up here and I will just search my files. So I will type in, you can type in dad, you can type in father, you can type in, and I'll for sure, if I were you all, just because let's say you're looking for something that's related to graduation, type in graduation, look and see what we have, go back and just search grad and see if there's right. anything different. Yeah. Because there may be something named like, with father or there may be something with the name dad in it or daddy so we're just going to search dad at first this is walking you all through my process and how i do this um so from there we're just going to choose our file there are so many of these files that were super cute i had a hard time choosing which one i wanted to use um i really like this real cool dad one but i thought that it would be a little more difficult to figure out like which part we were etching which part we were mm -hmm. not it would be hard to weed that it would be yeah yes um so we're just gonna keep scrolling the one that I did use was a dad joke one and um, it says I keep all my uh, jokes like my official joke, my jokes are officially dad jokes. That would be really cute for like a first time dad. Oh, that, that would, would be, be so cute. cute for a first time dad. Um, there it is. I keep all my joke, my dad jokes in a database. I just thought it was, I just thought it was, I liked the punniness of it. <laughs> I like but it. there are so many other ones that are, we have that are great. There's another one, and I can't find it right now, and I'm not necessarily going to look for it, but it said something to the effect of, um, Dad, you've always been like a father to me. Yeah. And I just thought it was so punny and so, like, I don't know, just dry humor. And I, I love that. I'm a big, like, dry humor person. But anyway, to download a cut file from the Maker's Gonna Learn website, what you're going to do is you can either open up, you can click this and open it up. 
I don't hardly ever do that. What I do is I just come down here to this button right here. It's the little arrow pointing down. You're gonna click that. It's going to download here at the bottom. You're gonna double click it because it is a zip file. And then we're gonna open that up and then we're gonna pop back over to Design Space. We're gonna go to Upload. We're going to View All. Oh, I don't want to view all. We're gonna Upload Image. Duh, Lauren. And you can either browse or one of my favorites is dragging and dropping. So here we are wanting the SVG because we are going to be cutting this today. So we want to work with the SVG version of this file. So we're going to click this and pull it. And when this back here turns green, we know we're good to release. So once we release, it is there. You can upload that and it is in your uploads. You can see here, I didn't have to do that again. I could have chosen this one where I have already uploaded it into my cut file library in Design Space, but I wanted to make sure for those that are new to our channel, you know exactly how we upload these files, okay? So I'm just going to select that. We're gonna add that to Canvas, and now you can see it pulls in, and let's just get rid of this guy. It pulls in here, and now we can size this to fit it within our guide. So we can size this down to make sure it fits. Now, I don't have to worry about centering this, aligning it, nothing like that, because we're going to do that manually when we place our stencil onto our cup. Okay? So this is literally the only design space work that we are doing today. It is measuring our blank, putting our guide in Design Space, and dragging and dropping a file and making sure it is sized properly. That's it. And then our lottery ticket backers. Oh, but that's yeah. like very basic. I just forgot about I forgot about those. <laughs> I figured you'd get to it, but Well, I figured while the armor etch is sitting on our yeah. glass, we'll get to sizing our, um, the backers for our lottery yeah. tickets. Because it takes a minute to edge. Did you bring, did we bring the lottery tickets in here? Or are they out on the desk? I'll, they're on my desk. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. So, now that we uh, have this size the way that we need it, I'm going to delete out the guide. And then I am just going to, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Actually, we're going to go on to make it. So I know that I need a four by five ish piece of um, stencil vinyl. We're going to go to continue. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my cup out of the way for just a second. And I'm actually just going to be using this on, I'm going to be cutting this on um, not it. Uh, not smart vinyl either. Stencil? Well, just premium vinyl removable mat is what yeah. I normally cut it on. Yeah, it cuts on that too. So, stencil vinyl, premium vinyl removable mat, any of those will work. We're just going to see how, where we're sized at. That's a little big, but it'll work. We're just going to cut this piece off. We have a friend here. Their screen name is Raven Skull Manor. I'm sure that's not your real name. If it is, are you a biker? I feel like that's a very edgy name. But they, his name is Dave from Essex in the UK, has had a maker for a month now. Uh -huh. So, like, br br I feel like a cricket newbie, which is awesome. This is a perfect project for someone who, like, just got their Oh, cricket. for sure. Because I feel sure. like we're doing vinyl, we're working with a new medium like the Armor Etch, and uh -huh. we're working with cardstock. So you're kind of getting a little bit, dipping your toes into like a few different things. So this will be a good project yeah. for you. So I'm actually going to go back to edit here on my share screen. I have like eight inches of vinyl that I can work with. I'm actually just going to kind of move this down more toward the middle so I can make sure that I cover like all the sides and everything of the cup just to be a little bit more on the safe side. So now I'm gonna hit done, and we're gonna go over here to our machine, load our vinyl in. I am cutting this on default pressure. Okay. 
And then once that is ready, we're just going to hit the play button. Okay, so now that we have our vinyl cut, one thing that for those that may not have made a stencil with vinyl, normally what we're gonna do is we're just gonna automatically come here and like take off the outside. But that is not what we want to do in this instance because we want the letters and the words to be what are etched. So we have to come in here and get rid of all of the letters and the words and then we're going to take our transfer tape and transfer it over to our cup. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, transfer tape, we're going to cut some off. Good enough, we're going to Let's trim this down some. I love Caesar transfer tape. It's one of my faves. Okay, so now that we have our stencil, I'm gonna bring this back in view, I'm gonna use my little uh, floral foam here to prop up this handle and just excuse me if my big old head gets in the way I'm trying my best to keep this straight <laughs> okay it's a weird angle I don't know if y'all can tell like from the camera angle but it's weird angle for us to get things straight sometimes it really is so what I like to do is which this one will be fine this way okay once you get, there's a couple ways you can do this. You could do the taco method, or if you're working with something on this side, another thing that I like to do is make sure that I line it up on that side so it's perfect there. And then to get like the bubbles out, go from one side, especially on a curved surface, go from one side to the other. So taco method is what we normally do. Yes. But this is, this tends to just work for me just so I can make sure I get all of the bubbles out on a curved surface. Are you going to name that method? But <laughs> when it comes to putting your stencil down, you want to make sure that you come in and really get, and we can like lay this down and then we're going to go ahead and take this transfer tape off. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to come in and make sure that all of my edges of my stencil are down super good. Okay, this is the issue that I kind of ran into the last time is the middle of my letters for some reason not wanting to stick. Sometimes that stencil vinyl, so the stencil vinyl is like not as tacky and I have this issue sometimes too and like I want to use it for projects like this. Um, but and really and truly like permanent vinyl probably would have been better. Or even like maybe like rem just removable vinyl because it's meant to stick to surfaces like this. Even though stencil vinyl is technically meant to stick to most surfaces still. I don't know. I have issues. I had issues with it whenever we did the um, it's etching the mirror like some of the pieces wanted to come up. But you know, that's kind of the nature of vinyl on slick surfaces like glass and mirrors and things like that. So you just have to know it's gonna happen and make sure you burnish it down good. But this is my little trick. If this happens, I will bring a uh, weeding tool or something, use a weeding tool and just kind of get between the transfer tape and either vinyl or permanent vinyl, removable vinyl, stencil vinyl, whatever, and lay it down with the end of it. Yeah, I like that little weeder tool method you're doing there. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm just going through and making sure that all of my edges are down very well 
The centers of my stencil are down. Okay, so now that we have our stencil down, we're gonna get our stab you in the eye um, paintbrush. paintbrush. <laughs> Poke your eye out. Poke your eye out. And you know what? It's a good thing it's long because this armor etch is down toward the bottom. And we're just gonna grab some armor etch, and this is we're just going to tap it on <laughs> to our stencil. I'm sorry. What that paint? So what I like to do, and this is going to be, this is just my method of using Armor Etch. I don't really brush it on. I kind of just dab it where I need it because this is reusable. Like once this sits here, I can come back in with this paintbrush and get all of this excess off of here and put it back in the bottle, which is what I'm going to do before we wash it off. But I just like to like dab. You're dab, better dab, than dab. me. I don't do that. Lauren does like to do that, and I just don't be doing it. I probably should though, because we use a lot of it. We do. We use ours a lot. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to size our lottery tickets. And I saw where Jennifer said that you can't buy lottery tickets where in Utah where she's at. Um, this would also be something super cute if you did like. Um, your own little um, like coupons. coupons. Yes. yes. So like one free yard mow or one free dinner for dad or yes. one night off for dad. I know That's we, well, I feel like we talk about moms needing off too, but there mm -hmm. are some hardworking dads out there that yeah. could use a day off or a night off. For sure. So for sure. what I did is I just measured our lottery tickets. So these are going to be a standard like four by two and a half, and all of these are the same size. So we're gonna go back to design space. We are done with this. We're just going to grab a basic shape. We're gonna grab our square again. We are going to unlock it, and I said it was four inches in width. So this is just gonna depend on how large of a um, overhang you want to leave. You can do 4.5, 4.25, whatever you want. I think we're going to go with 4.25 this time. And our height, we said was two and a half. So I think I'm going to go 2.75 on that one. And we're done with this. So I'm going to delete this out. And we actually have one, two, three, four, five of these. So I'm just going to duplicate this four more times. Okay. So now I have five of these. It's going to go behind my smaller lottery tickets. We'll go back overhead. This one is going to be, I think it's like a four by four. Yep. So we're going to pull in our uh, shape again, another square. This one, I'm going to leave it locked because it is a four by four. So we're going to do a 4.25 and it should automatically go to what we need. Perfect. And then our last one is going to be a four by six. So once again, we're actually just going to duplicate this guy 4.25. We're going to unlock it. The height was six and we're just going to change this to 6.25. And there we go. Now we have all of the backers for our uh, lottery tickets. Love it. That was so fast. Very fast. We've still got four minutes left on our etching cream to sit. So. Look, if we really hurry, we might even have the crick the cricket may actually cut them all out for us. Heck yeah. We're gonna be working with a couple of pieces of cardstock that we have actually cut from. So this one. Miranda is asking where you save your projects at, like if you ended Cricut Access, you can still save your projects in Design Space. So they don't, they don't, they don't, they won't go away is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, no, your projects, you, you still save them in Design Space. It's just mm -hmm. some of them are, you're not going to have access to the ones where you used Cricut Access files, if that makes any yes. sense. Yes, if you use our files, they will stay in Cricut design space. Oh you. no. <laughs> so we're going to move this object because looking at, if we'll go overhead, looking at this because I do have these two missing, we're going to have to move it because it 
comes down past the nine inch mark here you can see and right here is our nine inches so we're not going to have enough room we're going to hit these three dots we're going to move the object to the other mat confirm that it'll be over here we'll come back to that in a minute and then we're just going to cut these okay so now we're going to go to continue we are going to be cutting this on glitter cardstock and if you all like this and you're really into crafting gifts, we did, um, we posted a video on yesterday. I was going to say on Tuesday as if it were like three days ago because my week is messed up. But um, yesterday, a video went out on a DIY 3D paper baseball cap. Yes. So after y'all watch this one, if you're like still in the mood and want to watch some more Father's Day gift things, it's so easy to make. If you're a member, you'll get the file already. And it's just a cute little, it's like a gift box and it looks like a baseball cap. It's so cute. It's very cute. I love it. If It's a great one. It's a little more time consuming than this one. I'll say that. But So what cool. I'm doing now while that's cutting and my etching cream is doing its thing, I'm just coming in here with my foam squares. And we're just going to add these to the backs of our lottery tickets. Now you probably don't have to go overboard and add four like I am, but you know. It makes them look good whenever you do four. I wouldn't do any less than two, like one on each side. Right. If you do one in the middle, like the lottery tickets kind of bow up on the side. Well, the funny. one in the middle, I'll tell you why I'm not doing the one in the middle. Because we're actually going to be gluing the, um, we're going to be gluing the dowel or the skewers to the glitter cardstock and then attaching this to the glitter cardstock so that you can take it off and it's not um, going to like rip the lottery ticket. Oh, yeah. That's why I did it that way. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so this one is ready to come off. So I have all of these. We'll get these. We'll remove these off the mat. If you all are not paper crafters, this is the best way, in my opinion, to remove paper off of the mat. Flipping your mat upside down and turning it, just be careful not to snap your mat, but it really is a game changer. Okay, so now we're going to... Time is up on your thing. Okay, well, let me get these started, and then we will move on. Let me edit this, because we have little stuff up there in the corner. I'm just going to pull this guy down. And then that guy can stay there, and this guy can stay here because I've got little things in the corner. So we're just going to hit done, browse, going back to glitter, cardstock, done, default pressure, putting that guy in there. And honestly, y'all, if it stays, if your etching cream stays on there a little longer than the 10 minutes, it's okay. And since I'm in a groove right now, I'm just going to let it sit for just a few more seconds. It doesn't hurt it at all. Honestly, Not it at makes all. it better, really. Yeah. And then we're just going to be adding in, well, I put that one on crooked. Crooked as a dog's hind leg. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever heard that saying or not, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> That euphemism. Here in East Tennessee. I may sound like a little hick, but I... We, <laughs> we love a good euphemism. Here. We love euphemisms. <laughs> now, once again, removing our cardstock, flipping our mat, and letting gravity pull our cardstock down. Favorite way to do that. Love that. Okay. So now we have all of our glitter backers done. We have all of our um, foam squares on our lottery tickets. We're going to set those to the side for just a minute and we're going to pull in our glass and I'm going to open up my etching cream back up, grab my brush, and I'm just going to start scooping this off and putting it back in the bottle. This is commitment, you guys. Alicia Ooh. would have just taken it to the sink and wash it all off. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Who I am as if a that is your prerogative, more power to you. You know what? I just I saw a little part of that E right there that I did not get. Just a little little tip of the Darn. E. Darn. Darn. 
Well, we'll just have to let it sit for just a few more minutes then. That's okay. We're going to wipe this off. So that's another thing that I really do like about wiping it off is I can, before going to wash it, I can see if I've missed anything, which I did miss a little part here on the corner of this E, and I, so I'm going to leave that there. But I'm just going to wipe all this, double check everything, and then here in a minute, I'm going to have Alicia go wash this off, and we will remove all of the... Um, the stencil vinyl, so you all can see the end results. Okay, so we're gonna scoot this back over to the side, um, bring our backers back in, and what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to, because I don't need the dowels, all of the dowels to be that long. Actually, I don't think I need any of them to be that long. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut my dowels or skewers, whatever you use. Just snap that thing off. I'm just trying to make it a little bit, <laughs> a little better than just snapping Karate that sucker. chop it off. <laughs> you know, they give me a little bit a, of a guy. And y'all can tell me, like, I feel like you could use wire cutters for this, but they need to make dowel cutters for crafters. Like, I feel like I never know. I'm like, I could use scissors. Do I want to ruin my scissors? No. No. I could use wire cutters, but like that's not really what it's for. You know what I'm saying? Like I need yeah. a good dowel cutting. Yeah. Cutter. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our dowels and I am going to, and I'm not going to cut all, if you can see, I didn't cut all of my dowels because I want them all at different heights. So I'm just going to take my hot glue gun. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of that dowel. And we're just going to place it down on our glitter cardstock. And then we're just going to continue with all of them. And I do think I'm going to put, hmm, do I want that guy on a tall dowel or a skinny? We'll put him on a tall. I was thinking tall too. Yeah. We'll put this guy on the tall. Dorothy says Ooh. garden nippers for the dowels. That's a good idea. Uh, Lynn yeah. says dog nail trimmers. Okay. Miter knife. Kim says they have a miter knife. Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought to use one of those. Okay. Well, thanks for all the suggestions, everybody. Love them. Love that. What are y'all doing for vacay? I feel like vacation is like here. It's like vacay time. We're, we were just talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Chicago next weekend, and then we're going to uh, Garden City or Merle's Inlet. Lauren's going to go to the beach somewhere. I don't know yet. Undecided. Sadie, you're going to Charleston? I love Charleston. It's so nice. Would glue dots work for this? I feel like the foam dots are going to rip some of the lottery ticket when you try to take them off and mess up the barcodes on the back. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, let's just try to take one of them off real quick. See what happens. Actually, let's go ahead and bring this guy in and try to take one of them off the back of this one. So if we do win the lottery, do we have to share it with each other? <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> what if we win like a bunch of money for reals? There's a possibility. So I'm taking the glue, the foam squares off, and y'all, I have like pressed these on hard because I like will walk through the office, and sometimes these will come up just a little bit, and I'll just like squeeze them. So I'm taking the foam squares off, and as long as you're careful, it's like not, it's not messing that one up. Okay, so now once you have your um, dowels or skewers, on there, we're just going to come in here and take off the back of our lottery tickets, or shoot, foam squares. And we're just going to place them onto our glitter cardstock. So cute. Let's see which ones I want to use. I didn't bring, oh, 
I like that when the lucky sevens. Let's use it. So I don't know if you all see what I'm doing and why I did it this way. The reason that I'm gluing the dowels to the front of the glitter cardstock instead of to the back is so that you can't see the dowels on the back. So it's kind of sandwiched in between the lottery tickets and the back. That's why I did it. And I really wanted to be extra, extra and like put another piece of glitter cardstock on the back, which you could do, but I, it's, it's completely up to you. So anyway, little craft. Okay, so we still have a couple more and we'll do that here in a minute, but I want to bring in our etched mug so you all can see how well this did. I don't know if they can see it better with or without the paper towel. Without? There. Oh. Look how well that etched, nice. y'all. Nice and crispy. Now, that looks good. That's profesh. So we have it on this side and on this side. This side I did a little bigger, I can tell. Yeah, but it's okay. Side. They look good. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so now what you're going to do once you have your lottery tickets done and your, and I think I'm just going to like use some of these that I have already um, glued on to show you how I like to arrange them. Um, so what I did and what I like to do is we want to try to hide the, um, foam square so the floral foam we want to try to hide it so what I did is I took my floral foam put it in the middle of our tissue paper and I'm actually gonna up this way because it has to be fit with like in here so it can't lay it can't be thick it has to kind of be tall and skinny but we're gonna place it inside our tissue paper like this and then you're going to place it down in the cup and kind of arrange your tissue paper and then we will add some more here in a minute so once you have done that then you are going to come in and start adding in your lottery tickets placing them different places and i'm actually i think what i'm going to do i'm going to grab a second sheet of tissue paper and I think, let's see, actually, I'm going to do this one. Let's do this. Um, and I'm going to, because my floral foam, I'm just going to kind of, mm, we're going to tear it in half and I'm going to crumple it up and I'll show you why in just a second. Because it's going to offer a little bit more support on the top for that floral foam. That way when I come in here, it's not moving back and forth. There we go. And then you're just going to start arranging all of your, so we've got Ruby here. We're gonna put this one and then we'll do this other guy here. And then you're going to fix your tissue paper. And that's it. How cute. Look. I love it. I so think too. You could even add in like little candy uh, pieces oh, yeah. on there. And just glue them to dowels as well. Oh, for sure. That's so stinking cute. I love it. I feel like it's in my